This PA and this uh, type of um, failure occurs due to violation of the mechanism of the respiration. So the mechanism of formation dyspnea is based on the um, change of broken mechanism of the mechanism of respiration. About respiratory failure, another term. It's a compensatory reaction aimed at reducing the severity of gas exchange disorders. So respiratory failure can be a result of ventilation failure and in the base and in fact it's um, uh, gas exchange disorders. Yes, decreasing the level of uh, saturation of oxygen, increasing the level of carboxygen or abnormally um, gas structure is the base in uh, the respiratory failure. So ventilation, deficiency of ventilation failure, then broken the mechanism of respiration. Yes, exactly mechanism, mechanical part of respiration. And uh, respiratory failure, contact with gases, uh, gas exchange disorders. So, and look at this picture. It's a first position of patient with bronchobstructive syndrome. Yes, when the patient try to um, attitude and run to continue additional type of respiratory muscle, muscles to help himself to make a um, good type and alternative exhale. Next, it's, so dyspnea, can be, and it, in fact, it's the main complaints of the patient with respiratory disease. So continue. Peripheral edema, and we discussed with you also method of determination on this peripheral edema, and peripheral edema can be complaints of the patient not only uh, with um, heart failure, but uh, also in patient with respiratory diseases. And let's so um, discuss in which cases uh, that such compliance like a peripheral edema or such objective signs like a peripheral edema can be a compliance of patient with respiratory disease. Peripheral edema is a consequence of right ventricular failure, which develops in acute, subacute, and chronic pulmonary heart in patient with acute and chronic respiratory disease. Pathology. So, from these words, we can uh, we can um, take in mind that in fact peripheral edema can be caused like acute, so and chronic type of um, damaging uh, of the lungs, and in case of acute and subacute stages. But in the central uh, of this problem of peripheral edema in patients with respiratory diseases, it's place for development and for formation of pulmonary heart formation. Just I open your chat. You sent me messages about presence. Uh, you're um, present on the lecture, yes? Mm -hmm. I see. So, and cause of uh, pulmonary heart formation like a main moment. Just it's obstructive processes, which kind of obstructive processes, obstructive pulmonary emphysema with obstructive bronchitis and bronchial asthma, all type of bron um, obstructive types of processes. And the main, it's a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease with obstructive bronchitis and uh, <coughs> bronchial asthma. Next, primary pulmonary emphysema with alpha-1 antidepressant deficiency, like a congenital pathology. Deficiency of the alpha-1 antidepressant. Next, first group, obstructive, process, uh, obstruct, obstructive processes. Second big group, restrictive processes. Included lung compaction syndrome, post-resection condition after resection of the part of the lung, congenital lung pathology, many types of congenital lung pathology can be cause of development pulmonary heart formation, and compression atelectasis after compressive some uh, and collapsing of the lecture, accumulation of fluid or air in the pleural cavity and gross chest deformities. Look, chest deformities also can be a cause of formation, pulmonary, uh, uh, formation of the pulmonary heart. Second big group, yes, restrictive process. 
abstractive process and in the base of abstractive abstractive process it's abstractive or abstracture or spasm or change uh, of the wall of the bronchi and restrictive process look to the name of this pathology it contact not with bronchi it contact exactly with pulmonary tissue or intestinal tissue of the lung continue Exactly closer to mechanism of formation of the heart uh, pulmonary. With bronchial obstruction syndrome, you need a ventilation leads to the formation of hyperventilation zones of the lungs with a low oxygen content in the alveoli or alveolar hypoxia. So bronchial obstructive syndrome, it's not problem not on the phase of exhalation, but during an inspiration about the spasm, about the uh, presence like a stankle in the distal part of the bronchi, it's impossible to um, ventilation uh, right in good day all type all uh, mass of the alveolus and exactly uh, will started to be changes at what it is changes and or disbalance in ventilation it's development the zones or areas of hyperventilation Yes, not uh, include, not putting, uh, come in, not putting in normally volume of the air inside the alveolus. It can lead to development alveolar hypoxia and development uh, the areas of hyperventilation. Next points, pathological uh, points. A reflex spasm of arterioles is pathological, yes, or early wrestler reflex in the hyperventilation zones, which will be formed by bronchobstructive bronchop structure, provides blood shunting from hyperventilation zone to normally ventilated areas of the lungs. These zones with hyperventilation don't need with the mounting of the blood for blood is implying, blood is applying, and the blood need to shut it down from these hyperventilation zones to uh, normally to help the tissue, yeah, for circulating, maybe for increasing and try to contain in the normally, um, normally saturation of the oxygen like a main goal. Next point. This determines a significant decrease in capacity, like a functional reduction, uh, reduction of the pulmonary artery and an increase in pressure and vascular resistance in the pulmonary circulation. Look, hyperventilation, then blood shutting down from hyperventilation zones to normally circulated zones, yes, to normally ventilated areas. This determines a significant decrease in capacity. Look, hyperventilation zones, one zone, second one, third one, it's blocked. So reducing in capacity, in fact, reducing in functional reduction of the pulmonary artery, and it can provide it to increasing in pressure and vascular resistance in the pulmonary circulation. Because all blood, which normally circulated on healthy lungs from the both sides, is shutting out on the center, maybe, maybe from uh, one side to another, and circulated in more located zone. Yes, and this zone less than normally a volume of all lungs, and it's lead to increase in pressure in these um, normally working vessels, and uh, it can lead in uh, increasing vascular resistance in the pulmonary circulation, and in fact, in general, in the pulmonary artery system. So, three points. Next. The severity of arterial hypertension and vascular resistance in the pulmonary circulation increases by previous reason. Next, systolic overload of the right heart started to develop. Systolic overload of the right heart. Working against increased vascular resistance is formed. In restrictive process, which contact with exactly with intestinum tissue of the lungs and increase in pressure in the pulmonary artery system is associated with turning off the critical part of the lung from ventilation and returning to the first pathological mechanism of formation, pulmonary heart formation, yes, zones of hyperventilates. Uh, 
An increase in pressure in the pulmonary artery system is an obstacle to the movements of the blood from the right ventricle to the vessels of the pulmonary circulation. Yes, because a total peripheral, um, peripheral resistance uh, of um, the blood vessels increasing what it is, it's spasm. In fact, total peripheral resistance increasing, it means that it's spasm of all arterials. It's working like obstacle to the um, putting out uh, putting out blood from the right ventricle to the vessels of the pulmonary circulation for normally lung circulation and perfusion and gas exchange. And systolic overload of the right ventricle with its compensatory hyperfunction and hypertrophy develops. So, Systolic overload of the right ventricle leads, first of all, from uh, on the first stage, it's development like a hyperfunction and hypertrophy, and on the last stage, it will be dilatation of the right ventricle. So the base moment of development of the pulmonary heart. Pulmonary heart can be a result of many diseases of the respiratory system. And uh, by the formation of the pulmonary heart, we can explain with you um, presence peripheral edema syndrome in patients with respiratory diseases. So, and look to this picture. Uh, in the picture with normally, normal heart, yes, we assessment no we can assess normally circulation normally mm, normally cavities of left ventricle and normally cavity of right ventricles uh, right atriums uh, left atriums normally yes from the right ventricular uh, blood go out to the pulmonary artery to the trunk of the pulmonary artery, yes, and uh, putting out to the small cycle of circulation for oxygenated uh, the nozzle type of blood and uh, uh, then uh, around into the big cycle of circulation for blood supply, yes. In pathological situation, yes, we first moment uh, remind that it's formation of the zones of hyperventilation about bronchobstructive syndrome. Look, these zones blocking, yes, uh, blood, uh, blood, blood from these zones which closed from the ventilation, shutting out to the normally ventilated zones, it points increasing level of the resistance of the pulmonary, uh, pulmonary vessels and pulmonary, uh, pulmonary atrials. All these points leads to increasing in the level of the uh, peripheral um, resistance of the pulmonary arteries. And all these points leads in fact to systolic overload of the right ventricle. And look to the pulmonary hypertension or pulmonary heart. Because in fact, in the base of pulmonary hypertension, we can assess and development of the pulmonary heart. Yes, what it is pulmonary hypertension means that due the time after collect the systole other load, look to them and consider is the cavity of the right ventricular there and the cavity of the right ventricular in the case of pulmonary heart. Enlargement right ventricle, yes. And in the first stage, pulmonary, not pulmonary heart, organism try to uh, compensate this uh, pathological situated, situation in development first hypertrophy and on the last stage, dilatation of the cavity of the right ventricle. And pulmonary hypertension means that uh, the level of the blood pressure in the pulmonary arteries increasing from the normal level, yes. Look, is it clear uh, for all of you uh, mechanism of formation of pulmonary heart? Because it's very important for understand the mechanism of development edema in patients with respiratory diseases. You can answer me by your voice. Is it clear for all of you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, professor. Okay. So continue. Continue. Next uh, moments about inspection of patients with respiratory system disease. Yes, we discussed it in practical class. It will be all uh, only by the list some special terms in inspection patient with respiratory disease. During general inspection, uh, 
uh, condition of patient with respiratory disease can be satisfactory in case of focal pneumonia or bronchitis, yes, with increasing level of the temperature, moderate or severe lower pneumonia and lung abscess with productive coughing, <coughs> with formation or uh, not like me, <laughs> and or with formation in different type amount of um, um, sputum, yes, uh, general weakness, increasing temperature, and so on and so on, different types of condition. The patient posi position with um, pathology of the respiratory system is usually active, Yes, cause no reason for passive position, but during an attack of bronchial asthma, we know that the patient takes some special position and helps uh, increasing the volume of the chest. And also, we know with you two first position in patient with respiratory respiratory diseases, it's position with patient with dry pleurisy and position in patient with um, unilateral disease. Continue. During the inspection of the skin, we need to assess with you coloration. Yes, we can find general cyanosis, cyanosis of the lips. We can find skin ratios like a hepatic coloration, hepatic eruption on the lips and on the wings of the nose with cruposus pneumonia. Yes, and with my group, we discussed with you such, um, such, such, such case history yes, about hepatic ratios. Look, inspection of the limbs, attention is paid to the shape of the nails and remind some special symptoms about watch glasses and fingers and toys in the form of drumsticks. It's a special sign exactly for patients with respiratory disease. Inspection of the neck and during this inspection, we need to pay attention to the condition of the neck vents. Patients with pulmonary hypertension in the base, it's increased blood pressure and the pulmonary circulation. So the vents uh, of the neck can uh, or may swelling, yes, or may be more swell and increasing in the volume of the neck of the vents. So also it's important moment. Cyanosis, and not forget that for a respiratory patient, more significant development central type of cyanosis or warm type of cyanosis. Next, inspection limbs exactly, arms or, or hands, yes, watch glasses, changing nails and finger like a drumsticks and inspection next and pay attention due to uh, neck vents uh, um, in uh, its swelling. And what it is, it's picture of a patient with accurate cyanosis, yes, Three types of cyanosis, acrid cyanosis, um, diffuse cyanosis or central cyanosis and local cyanosis. So acrid cyanosis in this case, if your patient have some respiratory diseases, in this case, you can find some mixed type of cyanosis cause Acrotanol is more significant for patients for heart failure, but presence respiratory failure not excluded symptoms of heart failure or two. Just a minute. So, and some signs of acrotanosis. Localization for accurate diagnosis, it's the tip of the nose, nasal labial triangle, the tips of the fingers, toys, tips of the eyes and lips. Uh, to the touch, uh, the skin will be cold and there is no cyanosis of the tongue and conjunctive. Yes, and the scheme, it's a picture of the patient with accurate cyanosis. About central cyanosis or diffuse cyanosis, look. Localization. It's a thumb, yeah, it's, it's a limbs, it's all parts of the body, chest and lips, trunk of the patient. For the touch, it will be diffused or warm type of cyanosis, and uh, we can find and we can determine cyanosis of the visible mucosal membrane. And to assess visible mucosal membrane, we need to assess it conjunctive and clear and uh, under lingua or under tongue areas. So at this slide, you can find some che such changes of the nails, like uh, a watch glasses nails, and look at this picture. 
And on another, yes, and look, consider it these watch glasses uh, with really change it in the shape of watch glasses, rounded, increasing in volume, uh, more thicker, and the changing of the fingers by the type of drumsticks, significant for patients with respiratory diseases. So continue. Next, about local inspection of the chest. Uh, during determination, the form does not matter. We can find three types of normally um, form of the chest, normasthenic, asthenic, hypersthenic. We discuss it in the class. But look, also during determination, we can find some pathological form of the chest. And what kind of pathological form more interested for us uh, in key of respiratory disease? First of all, emphysematosus or barrel shaped. We discussed the you many times emphysematosus, emphysema of the lungs, a generalized process, simultaneous process from the both sides. What it is emphysematosus and or barrel shaped chest. This type of chest is characterized by an increase in anterior posterior size in anterior posterior size the chest is in the phase of maximum inspiration, like in the phase of maximum inspiration. Doctor? Yes? Can I ask you? Sure. Uh, can you uh, know uh, photo? Nazat, shoot, shoot. Nazat, photo. Photo, uh, put it sure? in. The, no, clear. What's the uh, difference between acrine central cyanosis? You want no, to no. ask? Dalsha, 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 I didn't reach. Dalsha, Dalsha, no, the fingers. No, fingers was the. Isha, Isha, the. The, no, what's the relationship with the respiratory system and uh, this? Respiratory system, this is in uh, uh, lungs. What this this is like this? I not understand your question. Why it's significant this symptom of watch glasses and fingers significant for patient with respiratory diseases? You want to ask me? Yes. <laughs> no, because respiratory system disease in uh, lungs need. In but look, not in fingers, and you, had, you was right. Look, uh, you are from group number 10. Uh, I, I think that you discussed it in the practical class with Mr. Ruslan, cause duration of the respiratory diseases at increasing duration of respiratory diseases, changing the mechanism of circulation, exactly, and returning to the pulmonary heart, yes? So yeah. the changing of mechanism of circulation can can uh, provide him to decrease in the level of the circulation in distal part and can be next. It's significant more for patient with uh, lung stage of uh, pulmonary diseases. For example, bronchoectatic syndrome or bronchoectatic diseases, which included long duration of poor lung uh, condition of the patient. It's significant for patient with abscesses in case of COPD. I can not, I can tell you, no, no, I can't tell you, and I don't want to tell you that it's significant for patient with a uh, short time of pneumonia, for example, like a viral, like a bacterial, it's significant for patient with a long stage of uh, respiratory diseases, like a bronchiectatic, like a um, uh, COPD. This, this type of patient, yes, need, not need, have a long stage and a long history of these diseases. It's impossible to, after acute pneumonia, change in the form of fingers. Surely not. It's significant only for long stage and long duration. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So, continue, yes, about emphysematosis type. Look, uh, the emphysematosis type uh, increasing in anterior posterior size 
the chest is in the phase of maximum inspiration, imagine, yes, you assess when in the patient and uh, you take a mind and you have a mind that uh, that is stainly in the phase of maximum inspiration, like a form. The supra and subclavicular fossa and areas are flattened or bulk or some smoothing. And look to this man, uh, to this man, look to this. There is place for a claviculus and look, it's very hard to differentiate it on this picture. Yes, where is claviculus? Why? Because supraclaviculus and other claviculus areas are bulk and smoothed. Yes? It means that increasing volume or arity of the lung tissue under this projection. The almost horizontal position of the ribs and extended intercostal spaces are noted. Practically horizontal position, like in patients with hypostenic type, um, hypostenic type of constitution, um, and the extended intercostal spaces are noted. Look. Next type, emphysematosus type of uh, um, chest significant for patients with bronchial asthma, surely, yeah, in case of emphysema of the lungs. Continue. Next pathological, next pathological type of chest, the paralytic form of the chest is characterized by asymmetry and muscle atrophy. And look to this woman, we can uh, determine asymmetry yes, in the structure of the two halves, if we consider it, uh, not they uh, will be the same, and uh, mm, uh, very high degree of muscle atrophy. Next. It's rickets or chicken killed. Yes, in all languages, it's called or like this way that rib cage nourished laterally and sternum produced slightly forward. Yes, more significant for young um, men. And look at this zone of the sternum. There is base of sternum and place of cartilage between the sternum and ribs. And exactly we can call it right, right producing the base of sternum with the upper part of the ribs outside. So rickets or chicken uh, or chicken or kale, the type of the chest. Continue. Next, the funnel chest is slightly flattened from front to back. Funnel chest type, the lower third of the sternum in concave invert. Uh, not very good picture, yes, but if you look there on the this the same point, the sternum with ribs is yes, some putting invert. And another type of uh, pathological chest, scaphoid chest, is similar to a funnel shape, practically the same, but it's characterized by concavity of the sternum in the upper and middle third in, in a shape, such a chest resembles a bolt, yeah? or scaphoid chest, or bolt, um, chest, uh, bolt form of the chest. So next point, on examination also we have to determine, uh, we can determine asymmetry of the chest in the respiratory cycle and the bulging of cycling of the one of the heart of it. And for example, in patients with hydrothorax with fluid accumulation, one of the plural cavity depends from the side, uh, we can determine bulging on the effect heart uh, or effect uh, uh, half of the chest, effect part. Be sure to evaluate to of the position of the ribs and their shapes. And during the examining about assessment um, of um, the sim uh, symmetry, uh, look, we discussed it with my group, yes, for students um, from not my group, look, uh, symmetry uh, in NOMA, in picture A, yes, it's a um, type of assessment and it's normally, you need to make a line by the digital way by the um, central vertebral line on the posterior um, fetus and you need to 
considered it simultaneous and the symmetrical movements in the phase of inspiration and expiration of both sides uh, of the chest. And in normal, the movement should be symmetrical. In case of uh, presence of the fluid and look, yes, they are fluid or water, yes. Fluid, different etiology. It can be blood, it can be a purulent. So in case of blood, it will be hematorax. In case of purulent, it will be uh, um, pyotorax. But in fact, it, all of this, it's type of hydrothorax or, or presence of fluid inside. And look, if you try to um, try to compare in, oh, just a minute. If you try to compare in volume of the two halves in phase of expiration and inspiration, yes, in phase of um, deep inspiration, you can assess the more big volume in the ratio sites, yes, because it's impossible to press uh, the lower of the water during the expiration, like a normally healthy mm, tissue of the lungs. And in other situation, in case of fibrothorax, yes, and in case of mm, decrease in volume uh, during assessment in the symmetrical movements during respiratory cycle, it's more significant uh, with fibrothorax or with a patient with atelectasis, like a collapsing of uh, the lungs, and uh, it's more detectable in the fees of uh, mm, in the fees of uh, exhalation, uh, the high point of exhalation. So it's about symmetry. Also, during examining uh, a patient, uh, we uh, can uh, Mm, assess to synchronization and simultaneous movements of the half of the chest and the act of breathing is acid. Yes, so you can to fix and uh, you can to assess the position of other channels and uh, continue like this way by digital way assessment and simultaneous symmetrical movements. During the examination of the chest, the condition of the intercostal spaces must, should be. Uh, uh, um, Evaluated and their retraction or bargaining if you can can determine it. The volume of the chest breathing execution is measured and using a uh, like a centimeter tip applied to the chest and the level of the shoulder blades in the back and the nipples and man in the front position. Measurement of the circumflex of the chest is carried out with calm breathing, circumflex of the chest during the calm breathing at the highest maximum inspiration and with the maximum exhalation in two points in maximum inspiration and in maximum exhalation. And the difference in uh, this um, around in cycle, during inspiration and expiration, we can call it like a maximum respiratory excursion. And how we can count it on MRE, maximum respiratory excursion. In the healthy person, maximum respiratory excursion are from the um, 7.0 till 8.5 centimeter, yes? A respiratory expression in not the same that ability of um, uh, ability of the movements of the low age of the, um, uh, the lungs it's some another measure what uh, uh, measure and uh, some another signs which we can count uh, for rounded shape next during our examination, we can determine the rhythm of respiratory movements. How we can determine count and the amount of the respiratory movements in case of presence dyspnea, dyspnea and bronchobstructive syndrome when we, uh, when we can head and listen exactly respiratory cycle um, from the... Um, from the patient, yes, from the distance of the patient, you can count respiratory movements by your ear or by your head. 
but uh, normally we can detect the respiratory movements of half a person and we need to put the, your hand on the projection of the aqua the ribs yes or maybe on the it's um, not significant for patient that you continue to assess the pulse of the patient on the radium arteries and then you put your another hand on the projection of the acotherps and continue uh, assess uh, the respiratory rate. Normally, by the rules, we can assess respiratory rate only um, during one minute. We can do it for less time because it was not very right. But uh, there is uh, some new recommendation about acute problems, about uh, the collapse, about the shocks. And in this recommendation, we can assess the respiratory rate for one half of minute, for 50 for 50 minutes yes but normally uh, in healthy person not less than one minute so and we kind and we count uh, the respiratory rate in normal in healthy person respiratory rate can be average from uh, by by literature from 16 to, uh, till 20 yes but it depends from the size of our patient if our patient is sportsman for example surely the respiratory rate can be some less than 60. if our patient a small little girl surely uh, the respiratory rate can be closer to 20 or 21 Yes, but in fact, by literature from from 16 till 20, it's normally respiratory rate more than 20 in tachypnea, less than mm, 6 uh, it's bradypnea. So it's about normally type of um, breathing and normally um, normally uh, normally respiratory rate. Uh, during our examination, and you should know that there is some pathological type and pathological rhythm of breathing, uh, included four main forms. First, uh, first form, it's pathological breathing of chain strokes, increasing and decreasing in amplitude with interpution from seconds to a minute. And look to this graphic, it's pathological breathing of chain strokes. Firstly, increasing, then decreasing, decreasing, yes, volume. In fact, it's a spirogram. It's a graphic from, from spirogram decreasing in the volume of um, the respiration and then pause. Then the same, increasing, pause. It's a breathing, pathological breathing of chain stocks. Returning, next type of pathological breathing, it's breathing of biot. What, uh, which signs of uh, breathing of biot uh, we have to know. With interpution in the phase of minimum amplitude 16 from a few seconds to a half a minute. Yes, so interpution in the phase of minimum amplitude from a few seconds to a half minute and look to the graphic yes normally amplitude the same amplitude not in case of change stocks and then from a half to a minute um it's a resp uh, it's a um, breathing of bios next type it's a uh grox dissociated breathing and lighting but without interpution and without apnea at all yes yes and the lighting some increasing then decreasing but no pause no no breathing no minutes without breathing because in fact it's pause in the breathing process and the last one the most interesting is pathological type of breathing like a he smellless breathing it's a big amplitude nosy breathing loud slow breathing with the breathing rate from six till ten in a minute very loud and we can assess this type of pathological breathing from distance of a patient the same amplitude big amplitude big volume of the mm, respiratory yes without pause it tall uh, with uh, the respiratory rate from six till uh, till ten um, pathological respiratory rate in minutes 
So that's the main pathological type of breathing. Next, we'll continue discussing uh, the most important um, pulmonary syndromes so, um, in um, pulmonary syndromes um, or um, in uh, practice of the pulmonary diseases. And the first is pulmonary consolidation syndrome. What it is pulmonary consolidation syndrome? The essence of the pulmonary consolidation syndrome is significant decrease or complete absence of lung parent hemoaerons on more or less widespread area. Segment, lab, few lobes simultaneously. This is one of the most frequent syndromes in pulmonary pathology. And why, that's why we discuss it by firstly. What about cause of pulmonary consolidation? First of all, it's inflammatory infiltration, such a pneumonia like a focus pneumonia, as well as specially defining infiltration and focal of focus of focal pneumonia so in first big group of causes it's inflammatory infiltration second group pulmonary infection due to thromboembolies or local vascular thrombosis low due to pulmonary thromboembolism, yes, and development pulmonary infection, and maybe in this focus then continues the uh, inflammation with pneumonia, focal pneumonia, but then the base pulmonary infection. Third group, it's atelectasis and hyperventilation, obturative atelectasis or segment all over, compressive atelectasis, pulmonary or lung collapse, exactly putting out the whole mass of lung, hyperventilation, middle lobe hyperventilation due to reduction of middle lobe bronchospatency owing to bronchopulmonary lymph nodes, fibrosis tissue, uh, as is well known, middle lobe bronchos incompletely ventilates, middle lobe no. L next reason. It's lung tumor, different etiology lung tumor, but tumor uh, which look, uh, which has a place in the lung. Yes, lung tumor by different nature. And congestive heart failure, blood congestion in low pulmonary parts. Yes, congestive heart failure. Mm -hmm. Yes, it will be pulmonary consolidation syndrome in case of congestive heart failure, uh, but uh, it's transudation, the liquid part of uh, the blood, yes, through the membrane to firstly to the alveolar, then to uh, then to interstitial, and then transudation in exactly inside the chest. Yes, it in it can be a reason of the pulmonary consolidation syndrome, but in the base will be a heart formation or congestion heart formation. Location. Consolidation focus or focus of consolidation might have different location, lower, upper parts, middle lobe, and in the pets from the nature. For example, in case of uh, congestive heart failure, surely localization of a syndrome of consolidation will be in down part. Yes, because it's normally that liquid stain, uh, stain uh, first, of all, first of all in down part and then uh, continuously up and up. In case of pneumonia, for example, it's significant, more significant for patient with uh, in, uh, in projection with uh, right lung. Yes, because we were reminded about the structure of the bronchus from the right side, more shorter, more shorter, more wider. Yes, so uh, pneumonia more often will be localized on the right side and in the base or in the middle um, lobe. About tuberculosis, more significant for tuberculosis localization in the apex, in the, apex of um, the lungs from the both sides. So localization of the syndrome of pulmonary consolidation depends from the nature on the base um, pathology. So next uh, pathological um, syndrome, it's inflammatory infiltration. Which signs? Cough, sputum, inflammatory infiltration. Cough, sputum, the main complaints. Pains, entrenching in deep inhalation, particularly in superior local, uh, location of consolidation focus. 
Asymmetric chest motion in inspiration, different movements during respiratory cycle. In large consolidation focus and its superficial location it may be um, discovered bugging and lagging motion on the space of the chest during respiration. Increase the vocal frame into or vocal trembling or waist trembling in consolidation area, increasing significant increasing in patients with consolidation syndrome. The vesicular breathing sound change in the bronchial breath sounds and bronchophony also can be increased in case with uh, the same situation with in increasing the vocal uh, vocal vocal trembling. In the initial and the resolution stages of pneumonia, when there is a little amount of exudates and alveoli and the rust rich uh, in air coming in, diminished in the vesicular brief sound and fine or late inspiratory crackles repetition uh, can be had about the infiltration area. At the high stage of pneumonia, alveoli are filled up with exudates, so like a vesicular brief sound so is replaced by bronchial. And heterogeneous causes like inspiratory and expiratory crackles are had because of frequent involvement of bronchi and inflammatory process. And revealing of consonant most fine bubbling rails has particular diagnostic meaning because it means about presence of infiltration zones and increasing sound transmission around small bronchi. About the three diagnostics, we'll continue it in some later, and we will have uh, exactly a whole lecture about the X-ray diagnostics. And the X-ray allows to obtain a notion about focus shape and size and consolidation. Focus of lung perihema looks like a local shading. And look to this picture. Yes, if you consider it, this X-ray, it's normally, it's the nomen. Then, above the healthy lung tissue on the X-ray, we will determine um, black color. Yes, because more airy substance and airy on um, X-ray, on exactly on the picture of the X-ray, we will determine black color. And look, if we if we consider it two halves, yes, what uh, we can find there. It's symptom of consolidation, surely, yes. Look, the same level uh, there also, we in healthy person, we can determine their healthy lung tissue in black color, yes. But there is a white color. It means the density in this area increasing. And we start to think with you with firstly about inflammation, yes. Maybe about congestive heart failure, but congestive heart failure and consolidation syndrome which key contact with uh, the heart failure it's simultaneous and symmetrical process impossible to have a transudation only from the one side so this type unilateral uh, the, in the base of uh, this consolidation syndrome mm, is based on unilateral diseases like maybe pneumonia yes maybe focal pneumonia maybe initial stage of pneumonia but the syndrome of consolidation inflammatory infiltration it's the same. So continue. Lower pneumonia, initial stage of lower pneumonia. Morphology, congestion stage uh, in garden and rapid bacterial proliferation. In case of inspection of patient, an increased respiratory rate is usually evident. Pains is a frequent accompanied and within the involved side uh, shows a lack of respiratory motion. During palpation of patient with lower pneumonia, palpation confirms the findings on inspection. Tactile normal or even slightly decreased in the pleural friction rub may be present. About percussion of the lungs, impaired resonance may be elicited with a light percussion, and this finding is extremely important. And during auscultation, all of the brief sounds may be diminished, prolonged, and crepitation like a crepitus, pleural friction sound is determined in case of lower pneumonia. 
stage of consolidation of lower pneumonia. Morphology of this stage. It's a uh, red uh, hypertization or red density stages. Air spaces are filled uh, with uh, protrombin cells, vascular congestion, yes, uh, so all types of cells of inflammations, uh, um, extra vasitation of um, extra vasitation of red blood cells, and uh, in stage of gray, accumulation of fibrin, inflammation from the white blood cells and red blood cells, and there is stages of disintegration and uh, making disintegration and making this structure in um, the normally healthy tissue and alveolar spaces filled with inflammatory exudates. About the main complaints, the patient with the lower pneumonia in the stage of consolidation. Coughing may be associated with a sharp pain in the affected side and mucoid sputum becomes rust and brown, maybe some prudent color. During general inspection, cyanosis of the lips and fingers, then the fever is high, the face may be flushed, may be hypertonia. The patient's nostrils dilate on inspiration, and expiration is often granted. And about inspection, dyspnea is invariably present in different types of mm, dyspnea, and respiratory movements are generally uh, decreased, uh, generally generally uh, decreased on the affected side respiratory movements. During palpation, we can determine respiratory execution and the plural, plural friction rip and tactile frameters is increased or voice trembling will be increased. Percussion. Above the zone of um, um, lesion, we can determine some dullness of clear pulmonary sound or closer to the femoral sound. And during auscultation, bronchial breathing, bronchophony, uh, pect uh, uh, pectorological, and the widespread bronchophony are evident with consolidation, which provides the bronchus to the involved areas is open. And rails are less numerous and distinct than in stage in environment of resolution. It's stage of consolidation of the upper pneumonia. Stage of uh, resolution. Uh, resolution stage, resorption of the exudate during inspection of the ba base morphology. Yes, during inspection, the patient looks more comfortable and the cyanotic disappears. The dyspnea disappears and the affected lungs started to expand it again. During palpation, the previously increased tactile frame to so waist trembling becomes less marked and graduated findings become normally. Such a stage of reconvalescence. During percussion, the dullness gradually disappears and continues to, to the normal resonance of clear pulmonary sound. And during auscultation of patient in the stage of resolution of the lower pneumonia, the bronchial breathing is gradually replaced by bronchial vesicular breathing and later continuously by the normal vesicular breathing. But the crepitation uh, disappears, uh, surely it's also reducing after uh, in stage of reconnaissance. And small and large um, rails uh, can be headed and increasing in his numbers cause, uh, cause uh, in this stage continuously by clinical science and patient development of the sputum, yes, and uh, cow from the dry and unproductive, um, providing to productive uh, wet cow with um, different type or different amount of the sputum. So I suggest to finish for today, for today,